Only right. Uh, so we had just come out for um, a late lunch. We're on our way home now. Wait, can I list dressing and a mara? Maran Totanga retired this cars. I want retired this cars. But you know, you know, okay. Let me let me not say a thing. Mara was just checking in, saying hi to Melan the guy. Um, 
the vlog has kind of pretty much been all over the place it really has it's been a it's been a rather tricky weekend i thought that i was gonna be able to film but uh it's fine Renobua later Renobua later it's fine because the way this car is maneuvering is not it I can't have a conversation but I'll take a look hi hey everybody it's Monday um part of the vlog I am tired I just got back from work I unpacked my groceries as you know it's a weekly thing I do it all the time um, but the last footage you guys probably saw was the Jonathan Ball footage. Um, that event, probably the best event I went to this year. Best event I went to this year. Something about being in a space where you're celebrating something that you love to do so much, like books and reading books, um, and being with people that have read a lot of the books that you're reading or that you've read and and just being in a space where you just celebrate being a, a, a reader it was absolutely amazing and i must say um the ladies that i met when i was there are incredible they were just so sweet it wasn't like any other event i'd ever attended there was no cattiness there was no awkwardness there was no oh you know you can't sit with us there was no clicky what what there was just i met such great ladies and if you are somebody who loves to read i will put all their um youtube channels or if they are not on youtube uh instagram handles below and then maybe you can give them a follow um and just you know tell them that i'm the one who sent you there i would love that thank you so much um but it was great and not only that not only that you know how they always send you away with stuff at events a book lover's dream okay i got for me books <laughs> books and I also got books for you but these books I am going to do giveaways on on my bookstagram uh, page which is also my book club page um, that is it's here I'm blanking <laughs> I'm absolutely blanking oh my god brown skin reads thank you very much brown skin reads so they are five four five books in here there's five books in here so I'm going to do uh, giveaways for these for my bookstagram book club page so you have to be following on there if you're somebody who loves books and reading and we're going to do um, the giveaways there so that's exciting and then for myself I got a lot of books <laughs> I have to thank Jonathan Ball publishers for just really um, giving attention to people who read books and 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 being so generous in all the books that they send us whether they send us the books at home or whether they send us they give us the opportunity to choose whatever books we want on at the event we had the opportunity to take as much as we wanted hence why i took some for the giveaway as well and i really wish at this point that i may have taken more but it's okay it's okay we're fine uh, maybe i might add more from my collection of books um so we'll see we'll see how that goes um so <laughs> uh i got a lot of books i'm going to show you the books um if you are you're here you know that books are content that they are their own content on this channel and i thought i was gonna do like a a tbr video you know get dolled up sit over there record the video but then i'm just thinking nah not necessary let me put it as part of the vlog so i really hope you enjoy this part of the vlog especially if you're a reader really okay so we had some arcs there which are advanced reader copies so these are books that are not available on the market yet but they are coming soon um and they normally you know publishers normally send them out to book um content creators so that you can give it a read before the book comes out and then give it a review so 
I'll show you which ones are the ox. But before I show you what I got at the event, this is what I got earlier on this week at um, work. Earlier on last week, sorry. Earlier on last week at work, this is the American Roommate Experience. One of the cutest, cutest covers. And it's by Elena Armas. I'm not going to give you the synopsis or synopses of these books because I don't know them myself okay i'm just going to show you the books all i know is that elena armas is the one who did the spanish love deception and i've heard not the greatest things about that one and i was just like i'm probably never going to read that book but I'm, I'm willing to give this one a shot so i might even give it a shot like soon like soon as in today soon um and next out so i'm not gonna i'm gonna pull them out um in any random order this is if i survive you by jonathan escoffrey and they say it's a compelling hurricane of a book um so this is an uncorrected proof so this is a reader copy right and the book only comes out on the 2nd of february in 2023 so here it is what i saw at exclusive books a couple of weeks ago is this one this is the dead romantics by ashley poston poston um here's the thing right romantic books or romance novels they are fantastic with their covers i feel like the the illustrated covers that look like sort of like cartoon animation i feel like they are fantastic this is another one of them so this is what i got love it thank you jonathan ball next out is an advanced reader copy so this is not out as yet this one comes out on the 8th of December and it's called your eight hours start now so already you can imagine it is by Holly Jackson your eight hours start now already you can imagine it's probably um, going to be like a thriller definitely a thriller or a I don't know something but something very suspenseful so Looking forward to reading that one. Next out is one of <laughs> this one. I really, really wanted to grab it. And when I saw it lingering there, I was like, ah, yes. You guys know that I love translated works. So this is by Baek Sehi or She, uh, the runaway Korean bestseller. And this is called I Want to Die, But I Want to Eat Teboki which is a well-known um sort of like staple meal in in some asian countries including korea so yeah can't wait to read that one i don't know what it's about another one which is i think definitely a uh this is also a proof edition this one uh the underworld awaits but I think this has come out already, came out on the 4th of August. This is Daughter of Darkness by Catherine and Elizabeth Core. So mother and daughter, sisters, I don't know. But cover, amazing. Looks very fantasy-ish. Because I'm seeing the snakes, I'm thinking Medusa. I'm seeing snakes, man. Sing O Muse, A Song of Death. Sounds really, really interesting. Ruby Core. Now, you guys probably all know who Rupi Kaur is. Honey, Milk and Honey, The Sun and Her Flowers, uh, Homebody. I've read Milk and Honey and The Sun and Her Flowers and after The Sun and Her Flowers, I just I just wasn't really sure about her poetry anymore and, and calling it poetry. This is Healing Through Words, which for me is very exciting. This is, um, she presents guided writing exercises of her own desire to design to inspire creativity and healing and that cover is absolutely stunning i love that uh another advanced reader copy this comes out on the 23rd of february and this is wayward by amelia hart i've heard of amelia hart I'm just trying to think which book she's done but uh they tried to cage us but a wayward woman belongs to the wild we cannot be tamed that sounds great then we've got i mean <laughs> if you're a reader you've probably heard about this you might not read fantasy but if you do you've definitely heard about this and because charity is trying to get me to read a fantasy she suggested that i take this and 
Um, it's by RF Kuang. RF Kuang is the wonderful lady behind the Poppy Wars uh, series of books. And uh, she wrote this one. And it's a dark academia novel that is, is set in Oxford. Yeah, in 1836. So, of course, it's also historical. But I'm looking forward to reading it. It's a chunky monkey. I can tell you that for free. You're already looking at over 540 pages. So, hectic. But I'm hoping that maybe I might read that one. Buddy read that one with charity. Because, I uh, know, I think she's going to start reading it this weekend. I'm not going to do that. But, hey, another one that I'm very excited about. You guys know I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia. She's the author behind Mexican Gothic. The Beautiful Ones, which I haven't read as yet. Uh, Gods of Sh Shadow and Bone, I think. Um, and now there's this one, which is Velvet Was the Night. That cover, insane, insane. Um, and this is the last one that I got. So in total, we've got two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine books that I've gotten from Jonathan Ball Publishers in the last couple of days. And I am so grateful. I'm so grateful. Also out of there were some other things like bookmarks and a highlighter a jb highlighter set so it's got uh pink green and yellow highlight you just take it out here on the side how cool is that it's cool 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 and when you're a reader you use these a lot so there's that as well uh a coaster there's some markers and things uh, postcards and all of that so so excited for this thank you so much to jonathan ball for making me feel like a kid again uh the <laughs> the um, event was held at the dream box which is at prison break prison break market and the whole setup of the dream box is there's different rooms where they had set up um, different things you could do or take pictures in there based on inspired by certain books as well so that was really really exciting I really had a good time the reason why I say they inspire the kid in me is because I felt like a kid in a candy store full of books basically I'm, I'm, I'm slightly going to be a bit embarrassed to show you but I'm going to show you uh, maybe also in the meantime I'll be able to pick up some books that I can add to the five that are part of this giveaway so let's do that now. So this is the Nuts book situation, as you can see. Like, honestly, it's getting out of hand. And I'm now piling books and putting them on the sides here and putting it. It's just, it's a lot. It's getting out of hand and I don't like it. I really don't like it. I don't like how it's looking. At this point, I feel like it's about time that we do giveaways and get rid of some of these books. Books that I feel like I'm not going to read. You know, uh, ones that I have read, I'll keep, but I want to also send out this time around books that I know that uh, I'm not going to read them in a bit. So we'll do that and pick books that I know that chances are quite high. I'm not going to read them. And these are the ones you will see. And then the other ones you might not you're not going to see. The ones that I got from Jonathan Ball, you're not going to see. So this one, Exciting Times, I've heard that it's pretty exciting, but I've heard that it's pretty similar to Sally Rooney's writing and Sally Rooney's kind of, you know, literature. I don't know. But uh, for me, that already was enough to kind of sit, put me off it. So I'm going to give that one away. And let's see. Love and Color. If we are villains, I want to give away books that I haven't read yet. Uh, okay, I'll answer that a little bit later. Um, I am also going to give away this one because I wasn't really crazy about it. Um, what's this? I hope I haven't. Yeah, I wasn't that crazy about it. We Were Liars by E. A Lockhart, if e Lockhart, if you want to know how I feel about books, you have to follow me. Well, you don't have to. Uh, just follow me on Goodreads because that's pretty much where I put all my book reviews and what I'm currently reading, and so on and so forth. So, um, Evelyn Hugo, I loved these. 
I don't know how I feel about this someone right here. Hey, hey, hey. Um, let's do an exciting one. I know that I wasn't probably... Okay, let's do an exciting one, right? I know that I probably wasn't going to give this away, but I think I should. This is Beach Read by Emily Henry. So we're adding, we're adding onto the list. Um, you're not going to see the other ones because some of them are new releases. Um, so these ones are slightly older, which is fine. They're not that much older, guys. I'm, I'm not being mean, okay? I'm not being mean. Um, then we've got... Uh, let's do a, 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 a fantasy, right? Let's do that. So that should be. That's cool. So we've got five books here. So ten books in all in all will be given away. The other five I'm not going to show you because they are new releases. A lot of them are new releases. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go and try and uh, prepare something to eat. My hair looks a bit short. I'm going to work on changing my hair this week. Hopefully I'll get some time. And uh, yeah, let's keep it moving. Okay. taking down the laundry right and I'm busy like folding it up and putting it away and there's a dress that I picked up from Fushini the other day I'm not gonna wear it because I'm tired but it's a long white dress it's like a it's like a maxi dress and it's got you know the arms on the side here and then oh, it's just so beautiful and it's got it's got a slit right for some thigh action it is so beautiful it's almost like a linen kind of uh, material it's so beautiful I don't have white dresses and I picked this up last week and I washed it today. And I thought to myself, I have to mention this. I will try at some point during the week to fit it on so you guys can see what it looks like. If you're not going to see what it looks like in the vlog, just keep an eye on my Instagram. Just be on my Instagram and you'll check it out on there and uh, you'll see it. But, oh, oh and, and I use comfort. I don't know what kind of... Um, stay soft y'all use i used to use stay soft right the baby stay soft but now i switch to comfort comfort baby or i use the comfort perfume lux or something and this is the one that's that's that i used to be and this smells like it's got perfume on it it's it's, it's insane it smells so good so so good and then the other one that i also picked up from the other one that i also picked up from Fashini is this one and it's got sort of like a, a print almost like a zebra print but not so much um but it's lovely it's like a shift dress it looks like the one that i was trying on in my um lions valley vlog or where i was trying on it's not lions valley vlog it's uh where i was trying on new clothes yeah and there's like a mustard dress that i put on it's, it's like a shift dress it's very it's very wavy and stuff it's really nice and cuts off right um, at my knee and it's just gorgeous. It's light. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and it smells great too <laughs> But um, love these I am a Fushini girl. I'm going to be a Fushini girl through and through. I just love Fushini I feel like it does great clothes um, At really reasonable prices as as opposed to some other stores, which we're not going to talk about but it does them at really reasonable prices especially dresses if you if you like dresses if you really like dresses, I highly recommend Fushini. Highly recommend them. Okay, so I'm gonna just tidy this laundry. It's really not much. Um, and then I'm probably gonna pack up, go upstairs and read. Let me show you what I'm going to be reading. I'm starting a new book today. Let me show you. On today, I finished um, Tell Me Lies and uh, I rated it on Goodreads. I ended up rating it a three out of five. Um, because just ugh, Lucy's behavior just kind of brought 
the whole thing down for me. I was just like, this is toxic. How do you keep putting yourself in these situations? How do you keep allowing this person to do this to you? How do you keep doing this? And then there was just the white hope white privilege thing for me it kind of brought it down but the story itself was very very um engaging like i really wanted to know how it's gonna end um and it ended okay i didn't quite love the ending but i didn't hate it either i think it wrapped up just okay and what i'm going to be reading next is this this is you made a fool of death with your beauty by akweke emezi now you guys know how much i love akweke emezi i love their work I've read Fresh Water by them. I've read um, The Death of Vivek OG, which is an all-time favorite of mine uh, because I just feel like it's so lyrical, it's so beautiful, it's poetic, it's coming of age, it's um, finding your true sexuality, owning who you are and, and, and being comfortable in your skin and all of that. Loved it. Uh, but right now, I really just want to read... I was reading Woman Eating by Claire Coda. I really enjoy it, but... I just, I feel like it's it's putting me in a bit of a slump. I really feel like right now is not the time, so I put it down. I didn't DNF it, but I'm just putting it down for now. And then I'll pick it up at some point later. But I want, I've heard that this one is quite messy and uh, quite unrealistic in some parts. Um, but I also want to give it a shot because I love their work. And I have got this on audio and I've got the physical copy, which is always the best. To read along as you listen and um when i'm driving to work to and from work or driving anywhere i can listen to it on audio if i if i can't pick it up physically so i'm probably going to start reading this tonight it's fairly short it's about 315 pages which is really not that long hopefully maybe i can finish it within this week who knows uh, especially if i've got it on audio as well so we'll see and then that's pretty much it. My book situation is really out of control. At this point, I can't even... There's books literally all over my house. All over my house. And, um, yeah, I don't feel I don't feel the greatest about that. Um, I wanted to tidy up my winter stuff and move it uh, from my main bedroom to another bedroom in the house. Um, the tracksuits and stuff. These are not things I'm going to wear again for quite a while. So I need to make space in my wardrobe because... At this point, it's pretty much overflowing. And yeah, no, I don't want that. It's the next day. I just got back from work and uh, <sighs> mental health awareness month. Eh? Uh, lots to talk about. Um, last week I went to go see my psychologist, and today, before coming home, I had an appointment with my psychiatrist. So, lots, lots happening. Um, but we'll talk about that. We'll have a little bit of a, a, a mental health check-in. Um, but it's not, it's not a mental health check-in. It's a, it's a, it's a depression struggle check-in. Like, where am I at with that, right? Um, so we'll do that a little bit later. Right now, I want to go upstairs. <sighs> My wardrobe is getting out of control, y'all. Okay, my wardrobe is getting out of control because one, over winter I bought a lot of tracksuits. And I think you guys know this, I bought a lot of tracksuits. I'm more comfortable in tracksuits, especially in winter time. But now my tracksuits are taking over my wardrobe. Okay, and at this point I need to move my clothes. Um, so I need to move my winter gear and um, <clears throat> put it in the other bedroom because I'm not going to be wearing that for a while. And if I do need it, it's just, it's in the next room. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to show you. This right here, this right here, these two doors here are my winter section. Below is shoes, actually. So, <clears throat> 
I need to move all of these. Up top, it's um, bags, the very top, and somewhere in the middle there. And this needs to go so that I can make space for summer. This, this, this is stressing me out. So let's do the right. in a lady's room this is in a lady's room when she's here uh, but most of the drawers are empty so I'm gonna stick my clothes in here and uh, then I don't ever have to worry about worrying about the stuff for a while Here we go. So these are some of my winter gear. Fit in right nicely. My winter dresses, my track suits, some of my jerseys, not all of them. Uh, some of them are light enough to actually wear on a slightly chilly summer's evening. So those ones will stay that side. But we've made up a lot of work. We could have a chat. You're not going to see my face because I'm about to set up here. Um, I thought we could have a chat and you guys could listen as I cook. Um, just a little mental struggle, clinical depression <laughs> update. Um, yeah, let me get my chopping board. Anyway, in the last uh, week, I have gone to see my doctors. Um, my psychiatrist and my psychologist. Um, last week was just a catch up with my psychologist because I hadn't seen her in quite a while. And it was, it was a rather fruitful session. Um, I'm going to be seeing her a little more often than I normally do. Normally I see her every three months or so. But now, I'm going to see her every second month um, for various reasons. But today, that one went okay because we were just, you know, we were chatting and um, talking and all of that. So that was fine. But um, today was a little bit slightly heavier because... As you probably know already, psychiatrists deal with, you know, the medication dispensation. They dispense what they feel you need to be on. Uh, you see them so that they can either reduce your dosage, change your dosage altogether, or um, increase it. Um, and in my case, my dosage was doubled. Um, of what I am taking, which is Nuzac, uh, but I was taking something else, which is something I haven't shared on here, um, but I may have talked about it in my membership space, but I was taking something else, another tablet, which has caused a little bit of weight gain, and with me, Weight gain is a very, very triggering thing for me, which is something I discussed with my psychologist. It's very triggering. It makes me feel uncomfortable because I feel like I worked really hard to lose the weight, and now it seems like I'm gaining it back. And honestly, <laughs> any other person would be like, Katla, you're really exaggerating because it's probably maybe five or six kilograms or something like that maybe a little bit more but i don't think it's anything more than 10 kgs but i haven't weighed myself i still wear the same clothes i just feel heavier and i know that it's because of the meds so this is the conversation that i had with my psychiatrist 
who then told me that it's potentially these other meds that I was on. And I told her, well, I'm going to stop taking them. Because the thing about that is, when I see myself gain weight, uh, I regress and I go back to being sad and depressed and unhappy, you know, because I feel like I work really hard to get my body to where it is. So, even though it's not much, it's something and it's something that affects me and affects my anxiety and heightens it. So, because of that, and not only that, but also because of just now that I go out more and I attend a lot more events and things like that, I am more inclined to meet people when I'm out and about. And um, that makes me quite anxious. And when the attention is on me, as you know, with introverts, it's very uncomfortable. And social anxiety is a real thing. So she needed to double my dosage. So the greens I'm going to be having are these today with my sautéed chicken. It really isn't anything special, um, uh, but I'm going to have these. I've already had my uh, smoothie for the day, so I'm going to have the chicken. I'm going to spice it up a little bit and make it uh, add a bit of uh, Cajun sauce and all of that, so it's Cajun spice, um, and make it a bit spicy, maybe a bit of paprika as well. And then... I am going to saute this on the side. This is the Woolies Edamame Green Beans and Baby Corn uh, Mix. And this is great. It's all green except for the baby corn, uh, which is great. I'm, I'm trying to be... <sighs> okay, it's kind of hard. But anyway, in the meantime, we're going to just... Have that oiled up nicely and start this one again <laughs> um, so I feel a huge sense of comfort um, sitting next to my books because I love to read and I feel like my books are a true representation or how I feel about them are a true representation of me and I'm about to have a very vulnerable and uh, difficult conversation with you guys about something that I've struggled with really my whole life and I know you'll hate it when we say this, but if you've been following me for a while, you will know that uh, body image, weight issues is something that I have been struggling with. Um, and over the last number of years, I've worked very, very hard to lose the intense amount of weight that I did lose, that odd 27 or 28 kilograms. And uh, COVID then happened, and um, with COVID, along with COVID, I had to make some serious financial decisions, which included um, cutting off my trainer, my gym trainer. Um, I still have my gym membership, but I cut off my gym trainer, and this came around the time that I was taking a huge mental dip, um, and I wasn't aware that I was, uh, because I am a high-functioning, depressed individual. So it was perpetuated over the years and I didn't realize that I was falling into a depression. So I continued working thinking, you know, let's just wait out COVID. Let's just get some semblance of normal life and I'll just continue eating healthy, eating clean, which is something that I do regularly. Um, but since, uh, let's say this year, 
Um, I've been a lot more, not even this year, I think since I came back from the facility, which is, was in May, um, I've been a lot more relaxed. I've been a lot happier. My mood is a lot more lifted. And the reason is largely due to the medications that I take. And because my mood is lifted and I'm happier and whatever, I'm more inclined to have a drink every now and again. I'm more inclined to just say, well, I had pasta last week. Let me have pasta again this week. Um, I don't cook as much in the house, but when I do cook in the house, um, I make sure I make something healthy, as you have seen. Um, and even when I order in, I make sure I order something from like Kauai. Every now and again, I'll have like a chicken licking, but not all the time. So it's largely due to the fact that I spoil myself a lot more because I'm in a happier space. I'm in a happier space in my personal life and I'm also in a happier space just mentally, right? And um, so with being in the happiest space, I may have piled on, not may have, I know I have. Uh, to many people, it doesn't seem like I have, but I know I have because I can feel it. And I stopped weighing myself, I think about three weeks ago. Um, and I know that at that point I'd probably weigh, I probably am, I probably was around six kgs heavier than my happy weight, right? And it's fine. It's really not that much. I still have, um, uh, I still wear the same clothes that I wear and they still fit the same. Nothing is too snug. I think there's one thing that's a little bit too snug now. And it's because when I bought it, it was already quite form-fitting. Um, but everything else fits fine. And my thing is, I've just not been comfortable with the fact that um, I'm seeing like my arms are slightly bigger and it's a very big insecurity of mine. And I typically have a small waist, typically, normally. But when I've mm, piled on a little bit, it tends to go to my waist. And... Because of that, it's put me in a little bit of a, a mental slump with regards to specifically that. Um, and I've, I think I've been running away from it, hence why I stopped weighing myself, um, hence why I just didn't want to see it. Um, seeing it would make it real for me. And I don't know how ready I am, even now. I don't know how ready I am for that. So... <laughs> uh, so because I've struggled with it my whole life, I knew when I went to see my doctors in the last week that I am going to struggle with the fact that I feel like my body has put on a little bit more. And I know that it's a very high possibility that I will go into a mental slump. I will go into a dark place if I continue having these thoughts. And the reality is the medication I was on, I'm not going to be on that particular medication anymore going forward, but the medication I was on kind of piled it on. So if, if I couldn't sleep, I would take this med, med and it wasn't the best for my body. Um, so the antidepressant that I'm on is fine. More than anything, it's fine. It doesn't make you gain weight. So that's fine. But... <laughs> Uh, so along with the fact that I am slightly feeling a lot more anxious now because the weather is warmer and people are showing more skin and it's one of the reasons why I actually don't like summer and warmer months purely because it's hot and it's ridiculous, right? And you can't control your, it's harder to cool down when you're hot as opposed to warming up when you're cold, right? So... It's one of the reasons why I don't like summer, but also one of the reasons why I don't like summer is because it highlights a lot of insecurities of mine when it comes to my body. So especially when I look at other people that have great bodies and, 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 and I know there's a part of me that knows that I have a great body, but, but, but my thing is it's hard to mentally get out of that or mentally see it in that way. Right. Um, so, 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 you know, people may say that 
I may not feel it or see it, right? And that's how it works, right, with your body. That's how it works with body image. People might tell you that, oh my gosh, you look great. You look great. You're actually wearing crop tops now and, and, and ripped jeans now. And yes, this is the time in my life where I'm wearing clothes I would never wear. I'm wearing a lot more color. I'm wearing lighter clothing. I'm wearing yada yada ping pang. And I would never do that. I would never do that. Even when my body was at its greatest, right? I would still wear my dark colors because they are my comfort. They are my safe space. But because I've been happier now, recently, in the last couple of months, I'm more exciting even in my choices. I'm more daring even in my choices, even clothing-wise. Even though I know that I might not like it at the end of the day, I might want to take it off as soon as I get home, which is chances are quite high that that's exactly what happens. That's what happened with the, the ripped jeans and the crop top. That's what happened when I went to Berkeley house. I immediately got home and took off the clothes and wore something baggy, dark, and more at home with my body. And so this is something that, uh, one of the things that's causing me to have made the decision to go back to see my doctors more regularly. Um, and it's because I want to find a way to live with this. It's crazy because I don't, I don't feel bad for how I look. I actually like how I look, right? Um, I am excited about it. I'm happy with my body most of the time, uh, except when I have to wear something snug. So if I have to wear something like skinny jeans or a bodycon dress, I'll wear it and it'll look fine, but to me it looks, feels like it's a bit too tight, even though it's sitting perfectly fine. It's sitting the way it normally does it. Um, so it's that mind thing, right? So this is a conversation I had with my doctors and I told them that it's going to plague me quite a lot. Um, I told my psychiatrist today that I don't want anything that's going to make me gain weight because I am not ready for the mental impact that will have on me and I don't know whether I will regress or manage to make it through um, knowing that I have gained weight and, and be okay with it uh, long term. So, you know, my psychiatrist and I made some decisions and um, I've been taken off that particular one but I've doubled the dosage on this other one because it reduces my anxiety. And it's very good at reducing anxiety. So that's kind of where I'm at, you know. I gained the weight. I don't talk about it much because there's not much of it for you to see. I feel like if you had seen it on me, like, oh, okay. Um, but I do think if you pay attention to my face a little bit, you will see that it looks a little bit more plumper. I know I see that. <laughs> um, but I don't pay attention to it. And I just record and I do my thing because I don't want to confront it. And now it's going to be a very big focus of my sessions with my doctors because we're working on that as well. And the reason being is because I know I eat healthy most of the time. But most of the time has pretty much gone down from, let's say, 85% of the time to 70% of the time. And you follow my content, you know that I'm out quite a lot, especially on weekends, I'm out with my partner. I can't really attribute it back to alcohol because I typically have my alcohol straight. And I, uh, every now and again, I'll have a Savannah, but not all the time. So, I can't say it's alcohol, I can only say that I've been eating more because I've been in a happier place. So my portion controlling is not it, which is something I need to get right. Um, but yeah, it's like I'm talking to you guys about it now, but I, I don't feel bogged down by it. I don't feel overwhelmed by it. I feel like I still have very much a huge sense of control over it. And that's what makes me happy. That's what makes me happy. 
um, but I'm not the body positivity movement girl that you are going to see that, oh, I've gained the weight, I'm happy now, I don't mind it, I'm not my body, I'm not my hair. This is true. I'm not my body, I'm not my hair, and all of that. However, when I gain weight and I'm uncomfortable, I'm going to do something about it. I'm not going to sit and preach. I was wondering where my phone is. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to sit and preach... Um, no, be happy in your body, and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to sit and preach that I'm not happy with my body right now, and I'm going to do something about it. So right now, I can't even say I'm not happy with it. I'm just noticing what's happening with me, and I'm choosing to pay attention to it. And whether I do something about it now or later, doesn't matter. But, yeah, yeah, just sharing my thoughts. Um, just sharing my thoughts. Um... Yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna cut it here. I I want to relax. I want to unwind for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, fortunately, we don't have load shedding. Thank you today. Um, so I've got a chance to catch up on YouTube videos, Vlogtober. Uh, maybe watch a little something on on Prime or or um, Netflix. I don't know. We'll see. This what I find myself doing quite a lot now is streaming and not necessarily watching your DXTs and everything. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'll probably start editing this tomorrow and you'll see it at the end of this week. Um, so that was me just sharing my thoughts, you know, and also in lieu of Mental Health Awareness Month, just to be a lot kinder to myself with all these thoughts that I'm having uh, currently. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Uh, I don't know how long this vlog is going to be. I don't know what I've recorded, what I haven't. I don't know and nothing. But all I know is that um, I'm good. Over and above everything else, I'm good. I just, my anxiety peaks quite a lot now because we're in the warmer months. I have to go out a lot more. Um, I don't have to, but I do. I go out a lot more. Therefore, I meet a lot more people when I'm out and um being invited to events i've been invited to three events already as it is do i know that i'm gonna attend all of them no i don't um but two of them are paid for so we have to make money <laughs> um but um we'll see we'll see so i hope you guys enjoy this video and if you have thank you very much how do you feel currently about your weight and what are your thoughts on weight gain? We'll see. Um, for now, I'm going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to go relax and continue reading. You made a fool of beauty. You made a fool of death with your beauty by Akweke Emezi. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, sayonara.